Let's talk about how to improve your marketing as a consultant. Hello and welcome to your consulting business podcast. My name is Russell Pearson and this is episode number 22. Today we're going to be talking about how to improve your marketing, especially as a consultant, because there are things that a consulting business will do uh, that other people will not potentially need to do. And uh, look, I've been worked in about 250 different industries over the years, and so there are obviously different nuances in just about every industry you work in. But particularly in the consulting industry, there are some tactics that work better and some tactics that don't work quite as well. So so we're going to be talking about that today. If you're looking to engage more clients, if you're looking to engage a better type of client, if you're looking to increase your retainers or increase the uh, the amount on your fees, uh, if you're looking to retain people right, for, for more projects in the future, uh, and if you're looking to potentially just have better clients so you can get some more time back, this is going to be useful for you because we're going to be talking about <laughs> what is it in particular that helps you improve the marketing activities that you're doing. Now, I'm not talking about any particular activity, but probably more about the communication of marketing today. And uh, there are some tips I'm going to be able to give you on how to instantly improve your marketing communication and that can then translate out to a, a number of different activities. Now, that's everything from uh, email to websites to uh, publications to carrier pigeon, right? There are all sorts of ways that you can actually uh, touch base with your prospects uh, using language that's going to engage them more. Now, what is it that's unique about a consulting business in the way that they want to market? Well, one of the things I realized years ago, and for anyone who doesn't know my background, I've been doing this for about 26 years. I've been in that space of marketing, sales, and promotion. And it was probably about 10 years ago that I really realized that uh, just bringing leads in in any way was not necessarily useful to close the sale. And not only just close the sale, to be able to uh, get the best outcome for a client on the other end. And so how you brought someone into your world was as much part of a project or part of the outcome delivery or uh, the outcome generation as, as the actual work, you know, what you would consider the work itself, right? The projects, um, the, the, the small pieces of, of actual tactical activity, right? So when it comes to consultants, the piece really that you need to consider is how are you going to come in at an advisory level? In other words... Do, can you just contact someone and, and ask if they need any help? Well, if you do, you're going to at best be seen as a service provider. And I've talked about this before. There are really three different levels of positioning that you can come into in a consulting business. And you've got to be very wary about where you play in those as to how you can get your outcome. So to give you an example, I'll just touch base on that again. <laughs> there are, There's the advisory level where your client is listening to your advice. Now, they might not always take it because there are multiple options and part of advice is enabling people to make decisions on their own. <laughs> but it's not a case of um, uh, we, we need to be aware of if they're going to be willing to listen to our advice that we're not in a situation where they're having to tell us what to do. So service-based businesses are usually brought in when someone needs something. So they've already diagnosed what they believe the problem to be and they're coming to you as a service provider to say, this is the thing that I want. And then you, you will do some sort of project or service, whatever it might be, and you'll deliver on that. And uh, if you do well, then ideally you will get the, the result that the client want, wanted. Now, is that the, re the result that the client needed? Is that the result that the, the client wanted it for? So in other words, uh, well, I used to work a lot in the, the web design industry and someone would come and they would say, I want a website for these reasons. <laughs> and if we went ahead without consultation, without really giving advice, then we would deliver exactly what they're after and they would be happy with it, but it wouldn't necessarily get the goal that they were doing it for. It was just a stepping stone on the way to getting better clients, getting different types of clients, being found on uh, search engines, all sorts of reasons why 
they wanted a website. But the advisor steps above that and it's like, why do we want to do these things? What is the reason for it? Which means that from an advisory position, you want to be leading the customer. You want to be in that space where you can pace them, you understand where their perspective is, where they're at, meet them where they're at, and then help lead them into a future which is ideally something they need and want, right? And if we step back through that, if you find yourself in a situation with clients suddenly telling you, you should be doing this or we should be doing that, then you've moved to a service position. And really you need to be able to step back out of that to be able to be in a place where you're uh, giving advice, right? Now, if, and this happens from time to time, if you find yourself in a situation where you've been with a company almost too long and they feel very comfortable with, with saying whatever they like to you, you can find yourself being told specifically how to do something. And if you get told how to do something as an advisor, you are no longer the advisor. You're not even a service provider. You are an employee, all right? So if you want to hold that advisory position, if you want to have a... Uh, business, if you want to have a practice that enables you to talk at that level and to engage people at that level to help them get real outcomes, then you need to make sure that you're not stuck in a situation where the clients are telling you how to do something and ideally not even stuck in a situation where they're telling you what they need. You want to be at that advisory position, which means if you're going to come in at that advisory position, there needs to be certain things that you will do from the marketing perspective. Now, there are all sorts of ways to connect with people and that's everything from LinkedIn connections to lead magnets to paid advertising. All these things still work, absolutely still work in an advisory business. So if you're a consultant, you can still do these things. But the pipeline that you build after connection is really important because you want to bring people through not just a nurturing sequence. A lot of people talk about nurturing people, but it's not about nurturing people. You want to bring them to a point of diagnosis. That's the intention. How can we bring people to a point of diagnosis where we actually take time, even if it's just a very small amount of time, it could be five, 10 minutes, but we take some time to diagnose what's going on for them exactly the same way as a doctor would. Now, I know, thanks to uh, Dr. Google, that doctors in particular are getting frustrated at having patients come in and say to them, I looked it up, this is my problem, give me this. Yeah, give, give me this antidote. Uh, and, and, and you see the, the doctors, and I've, I've done this myself, right? You, uh, I say that to the doctor and you just see the, 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 <laughs> the face of the doctor start to screw up because they're like, it could be a hundred different things. Now they don't say this cause they've got good bedside manner. It could be a hundred different things. Let's at least go through the diagnostic process to work that out. Right. And they do. And they will take you through a process. They will ask questions. They'll ask very good questions to lead to a prognosis and then lead to what is uh, their their analysis of, of what you should get afterwards, right? Well, what should we be doing uh, after we've decided what it is? Now, how do you get into that situation? Well, number one, I always think that it's useful to have some form of diagnostic, but that's not really the focus of today. I will talk about that in another episode about how you can build a diagnosis, a diagnostic that actually is a really good path for your prospects to go through so that they start to identify the reasons why certain things are occurring in their, in their world. But let's look at it this way. Um, now, I've got to be clear for the people who are <laughs> not watching YouTube because I'm going to sort of plant some stuff out visually. Uh, I've got to think of those people who are listening to the podcast um, in the way that I communicate this so you can actually, uh, you don't need to be able to see what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Let's imagine that we've got four boxes and they're all in a row. So uh, one, two, three, and four. Um, by the way, uh, if you are listening to this on the audio version, I'd love you to come and subscribe to us on YouTube. You can check it out. Uh, see what the hell I look like. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. And if you are watching this on YouTube, do be aware that we do have the podcast version, which is available through just about every podcast platform. And if you find one that it's not on, let me know and I will get it up there. Uh, and also, if you are watching the YouTube uh, video, if you're liking what you're hearing so far, make sure you uh, like and ideally subscribe because we've got more videos just like this coming out. But let's imagine that we've got four boxes. <laughs> and on the first box... Uh, this is the point where we connect with a client. I'll talk about that in just a moment. And on the last box, it's the outcome that the client wants at the other end of things. So I'm going to work back from here because back in the 90s, what uh, everyone used to talk about was being the solution provider. 
uh, if, uh, you know, we're the solution provider of this and we're the solution provider, provider of that. And if you didn't have a solution, you were no one. <laughs> and anybody uh, who is over the age of 40 will remember that, okay? Once we moved through to about the end of the 90s, it was very much talking about sizzle. How can we sell the uh, sizzle without the steak? You know, all those sort of things. Or sell the sizzle, not the steak. But I'll tell you what, it was difficult to actually sell the sound of tss <laughs> when they couldn't see the juicy steak. So uh, the realization that that was just spin, all right? That's where marketing got like a bit of a bad name for a while. But stepping over from there, they realized that yes, benefits are, are useful, but features are just as useful because you need to tie it to something tangible. And so features and benefits were what people talked about. Coming through the uh, 2010s through to 2020, really what we've discovered is that while those things are good and they're supportive, the main key is what is the outcome? What is the outcome you're going to be delivering? Because that's where the true value is. And for a consultant in particular, who should be looking at selling on value rather than time, we can absolutely generate huge amounts of cash for a, for a business. And is that worth the value of our time or the value of the outcome? Right. So we're talking about not just um, not just cash outcomes. We're talking about life changing outcomes. We're, we're talking about uh, things that enable people to see a future they never saw before. This is all part of the consulting piece. And so outcomes become the much more valuable piece. And so when we look at this four step process I'm talking about, outcomes are very much at the end of it because that's what people want to get to. So really, that becomes a promise. You know, what outcome are we going to create now? I've spoken a lot about problems before, you know, what problems exist for your clients. And I think that that's a very good place to meet prospects at is what problem are you actually experiencing? <laughs> but here's the interesting thing. Um, there's about 20% max of the market that is at any one time problem aware, that they're aware of what the actual problem is that they've got. Now, we know that 63% of all stats are made up on the spot, but this one, in my experience, is very close to correct. So around 20%, which means that there's 80% of people who do not know what problem they've got, but they are experiencing the symptoms. You know, it's the idea of uh, I've got a pain in my leg, so I go to the doctor for the pain in my leg. I don't go to the doctor because I know that I've got gout because that hasn't been diagnosed yet. Now, I haven't had gout. <laughs> I don't know why I ended up using that example, but that's the example I've used. People are very much aware of their symptoms. Now, people who've got problems, like they're, they're even problem aware, that 20% of people with, who are problem aware are also aware of their symptoms. So if you actually talk to that symptom space, you will discover the 80, the 80 and the 20, right? So we're not even talking 80, 20 rule, we're talking about 100%. So the first box in this four box series is symptoms. What symptoms are people experiencing? And then we go from there and we diagnose those symptoms into specific problems. All right, well, it sounds like this is the problem. Does it, do you concur? You know, do, Does this seem correct to you? And often you don't need to educate. It's simply a case of diagnostic. You need to have some way of actually taking someone from a symptom and addressing it to a problem so that they go, all right, well, there's something to fix. We're actually tied an anchor to something so that we can deal with it because symptoms not, aren't necessarily something uh, that's going to help you get an outcome. You can fix a symptom. You can give um, medication and pain relief to actually stop a symptom, but it doesn't get you to the outcome. So the outcome usually is the opposite of the symptom. Let's say that the symptom is I have a pain in my leg. <laughs> the outcome uh, could be at the lightest possible version, I no longer have a pain in my leg, or the, the better outcome would be I have a strong, pain-free, healthy leg, right? You know, a powerful leg, you know? <laughs> These are the things that you can do with this. So symptoms go into problems, and then at the fourth box, we're talking about outcomes. Now, there's this one in the middle there, well, off to the side, the third box. The third box is the solution, <laughs> This is, the, this is where we're actually providing the, uh, the antidote for the problem they're experiencing, uh, the process, the, uh, the operation, the, the thing we need to, the, the intervention, right? That's what that is. Now, as a uh, consultant, our job is to consult. That's what we do. And so if we don't take people through a consultative, <laughs> if we don't take people through a consultative process, 
then it means that we are not a consultant. You know, we're at best a service provider. And that's why you find uh, in a lot of uh, marketing industries, uh, actually a lot of construction industries, you will have a problem that can be dealt with multiple solutions, but people are pushing one solution because it's their solution. So an example. <clears throat> okay, so the, the symptom is, I don't have enough cash, uh, I don't have enough clients, um, uh, my fears around those symptoms is if this persists, uh, I could go out of business. Now this is a business scenario, right? So that's the symptom. There's not enough cash, no cash flow. I've got no, I've got no money, right? no cash here. The step from there is to go, why don't you have enough cash? And that becomes the problem. So we identify what the problem is, but why the symptom? <laughs> because of problem. And the problem could be if we look at a, a, a marketing funnel, and I can do this for, you know, this is what I do all day. I, I look at marketing pipelines and funnels and identify where in it it's broken. Now, most people think it's because they don't have enough traffic, right? So it's easy to sell on that because they think that that's the problem. <laughs> but often it's not that. They've got like thousands and thousands of people coming uh, into their world in the form of traffic or leads. What they're not doing is creating steps, proactive steps to move them from a, a, a could lead, in other words, someone who could use what you've got, to identifying should they be using what you've got. And so that problem identification becomes a big one. So in digital marketing, you've got SEO companies who are always saying SEO is the problem to any marketing uh, issue. I'm oh, sorry, is the, <laughs> is the solution to any marketing problem. <clears throat> You've got uh, copywriters saying it's the copy. You've got uh, ad buyers saying you don't have enough ads, right? That's the reason you don't have enough traffic. And so they lean into these reasons. Now, uh, you can address the symptoms in many ways, but if you take people through a consultative process and here's the, the piece that I bring to the table, is during that consultative process, you collaborate with them so that they can add some input into what solution should be chosen. <laughs> now that comes down to, uh, will it fit their lifestyle or their business model or their budgets or whatever it might be, you collaborate on that outcome. It means that you get into a place where it's not just your solution you're bringing to the table. It's a solution you've designed together, which means the client has ownership over it and they're more likely to say yes. <laughs> now, have you productized your offer? You may have, okay? Now, I would suggest it's never a good idea to actually productize uh, until you've actually been through a manual process at least 100 times so you understand what is the language that you need to use to have people make a decision without you. But let's say that you've got something that's been working very well there is still a really good uh, process of including some form of diagnosis, even if it's self-diagnosis, so that people can go through that, identify the gaps, attribute those gaps to specific problems, and then identify your solution as the reason for it. That's what good copywriting uh, is often all about <coughs> in the sales world. So we have these four boxes. And if you were to start from maybe the outcome that you deliver, get very clear about the outcomes that you deliver, Understand what are the solutions you provide to deliver those outcomes. <laughs> Understand what solutions those solutions, what problems those solutions solve. So you actually got a list of the problems. And then look at the problems and say, what are the symptoms of these problems? And actually list them beside. You'll actually find that the symptoms category is much larger than any other category, which means that you've got content for days, content for weeks, content for months and even years. Uh, without having to even repeat yourself. So a symptom, for instance, of let's say uh, poor lead flow. So I've got I don't have enough I don't have enough leads. <laughs> uh, could very much be because I don't have a process for moving those leads. All right, and so then the that becomes the next step, which is like how do we go about developing the process? Or so we'll talk about the best way to implement that for you. Ideally, it's working with me, or we can work with the team, or potentially I can do a strategy for you to actually help you create those next steps with the design to achieve the outcome. So you're always focused on that outcome and helping them step away from the symptom. So this is one way to instantly improve all your marketing copy or your marketing communication. That includes people who are already working with you. I think it's important to understand that a lot of the clients who are working with you have come to you because of one of the symptoms or one of the problems but there will be an infinite amount of other symptoms and problems they're ex experiencing. And so it is worth your while to continue to work with the existing clients to diagnose what other issues you can take care of, right? 
It's like being the family doctor. You, you can, they can keep coming back to you. Uh, and as someone once said to me, you know, <laughs> if you've got cows on your paddock, it doesn't make sense to go over to the neighbor's farm and start milking their cows because number one, the farmer's going to try and shoot you. Plus you've got milk at home, right? So you don't need to actually go out and always be getting new leads, especially if you're not taking care of the clients that you already have. So if you're running a consultancy, if you're an advisor, if you're a specialist service provider that actually wants to step up a little bit uh, and make sure that you're in a position so that you can be giving advice from a point of view, people are listening to how you're talking about strategy, what tactics they should take, uh, then you really need to have that advisory position, which means diagnostic and understanding that you're taking someone from a symptom through to a diagnostic that identifies a problem through to a collaborative consulting exercise, which is identifying what is the best solution for them right now to achieve specific outcomes. Uh, and if we start with communication about those symptoms, we're actually gonna hit a larger part of the audience. Hopefully that's been uh, helpful. Um, if uh, you are watching the uh, video version, you know you can check out the audio versions on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, you can also find out uh, some more, like not only uh, podcast episodes, but you can also check out uh, some other resources that we have at consultingbusinesspodcast.com. That's a website where we have a number of different things that you can take advantage of, which are absolutely free. And if you are listening to the podcast, we'd love you to come over to YouTube, click like, click subscribe uh, so that you get more of this great content. It's not just the podcast that we deliver here. We've also got uh, other thoughts and ideas that I deliver. There's also some, um, uh, some live workshops that we deliver from time to time that also pop up here. And I think they're incredibly useful for those people who are professionals at what they do. You're expert, you're, you know what you're doing. You've been doing it for a while. And really now it's about just getting paid what you're worth, working with people you really enjoy working with. And that's what I do for people. And we do that through the Forge Business Program. So if you're interested to talk to me about that, if you're interested to talk to me about anything that's going to help you grow your um, your prospects for the future, having consistent prospects, uh, how to get into a position where you're auditioning clients. I think that's uh, an important position to get into, especially as an, an advisor and consultant. And also if you're if you're lacking the clarity that you would like and just would like to know what, what are the clear next steps I need to take, then do reach out, uh, comment on this post or uh, reach out to me on social media. I am easy to find. My name is Russell Pearson. Uh, stay passionate and I will catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us on your consulting business podcast. Make sure to click the subscribe button for future updates and also make sure to go to consultingbusinesspodcast.com for goodies made especially for you by yours truly. I will see you on the site.